Oh boy, as if the internet doesn't already clash enough with feminism. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Suffragette. Women should not exercise judgment in political affairs. If we allow women to vote, it will mean the loss of social structure. Everybody knows the term hot button topic, but these days feminism seems to be a nuclear button topic. HBO's John Oliver recently spotlighted the harassment of women journalists and just plain women on the internet today, and one shudders to think how that abusive contingent will react to suffragette. I've included a link to Oliver's segment in the video description, and if you're tempted to say he's exaggerating, consider this. At the beginning of this very month, ESPN's Jessica Mendoza made history as the first woman to cover an MLB playoff game on the network. But she was greeted by misogynistic tweets from Atlanta sports radio host Mike Bell, who called her Tits McGee and complained that ESPN hadn't found a more qualified correspondent. But while Mendoza is an Olympic softball player who's won the gold, all Bell can muster on his resume is Falcon season ticket holder. And sadly, with this happening again and again, Trump versus Kelly anyone? It's not that hard to imagine these same men's ancestors felt women shouldn't even be able to vote. So just like movies about race relations, Suffragette's timing seems perfect. This UK film focuses specifically on that nation's suffrage movement, perhaps most famously depicted up until now in the film Mary Poppins. And while Mrs. Banks cheerily sang reference to civil unrest, it was definitely a far cry from the stark reality portrayed in this film. Besides an all-star cast of Carrie Mulligan, Helena Bonham Carter, and the one and only Meryl Streep, Suffragette also impressively boasts an almost entirely all-female team behind the camera as well, at a time when the U.S. government has actually just decided to investigate discrimination against women behind the camera in Hollywood. Seriously, at the request of the ACLU. Sarah Gravon directs, The Iron Lady and Shames Abby Morgan writes, while Saving Mr. Banks' Alison Owen and Jane Eyre's Faye Ward produce. Most of this team made the 2007 film Brick Lane, which depicted London's growing immigrant population and racial tensions post 9-11. It didn't get a lot of attention, though, and admittedly, this creative team might be high on estrogen, but it's low on star power. But women in the film industry have to start somewhere, right? Is this kind of on-the-nose feminist fair the ideal starting point, which will afford this talent the same launching pad as, say, Ava DuVernay with Selma? Will Sarah Gavron be offered Captain Marvel? Will she turn it down? Will Captain Marvel actually ever be made? By the way, Captain Marvel itself is currently set to be released on International Women's Day in 2019. Will that help it? And will Suffragette be able to find an audience? Because there's been a lot of talk about how 2015 looks a lot like 1965, yet 2015 also looks a lot like 1903. So obviously there are a lot of groups out there that are fighting for equal rights. Uh, and they have to do that because there is some other group that doesn't want them to have it. Uh, but of all the groups fighting for equal rights, I find it both fascinating and tragic that women's rights is the only one that's been like successfully silenced, right? I mean, uh, I shot the open for this uh, review uh, about a week ago, and since then, there's actually been another development where the South by Southwest Festival canceled uh, two panels about women uh, in gaming because there were so many threats against it, right? There were so many complaints. And so women in gaming, at least at South by Southwest, was successfully shut down. And you see that everywhere. Every time someone brings up women's rights, it's always dismissed. And those against it uh, have, I think, successfully rebranded women's rights as complaining. And it's really just shocking to behold. Uh, and when you see a movie like Suffragette, which is a fantastic movie, not only in terms of the message it delivers, but just as a, a piece of storytelling, you're reminded that yes, Women have had horrible and tragic things happen to, things happen to them. Uh, they, w they have also been viewed as subhuman and property, and they're still also fighting against a lot of those 
same things, those same elements today. Like, for instance, at the end of the movie, Suffragette uh, lists when women got to vote in uh, different countries across the globe, and Switzerland didn't start giving women the vote until, like, the 1970s, and they weren't allowed to vote in every election nationally until 1990. Switzerland. Uh, and right now, I'm sure many of you are typing, you're ridiculous, Grace. Women's rights are not at the same place that uh, other people's, you know, fights for rights are. Uh, stop saying stuff that isn't true. But what I would say to you is, perhaps you're just not well educated enough to the problem, right? I mean, you can see the problem that's happening today, but I think you need to also see the origins of that problem and that there's actually a lot of shared history between these different groups that are looking for just, you know, honestly, a fair shake, not for better treatment or to take over, but just for a fair shake. And women fit into that category, uh, this, this category of wanting rights perfectly. And so hold off on the comments, go see Suffragette, and be educated as to the history of this movement. I bet you'll be surprised, um, not only by what you see, but by how it's still echoed even today. I was moved to tears several time, times watching this movie because, it, because of those things. It was so poignant, so horrible, and I saw shades of it still today. And to realize that you're still fighting that fight um, and what people are sacrificing for it is powerful stuff, really powerful stuff. And I would also ask you to wonder why movies like Selma and Beasts of No Nation get so much good press and so much goodwill from the industry, from the media, from the public, um, but yet a movie like Suffragette has an uphill battle from day one, right? Why isn't the, why isn't the same love shown there? And it's certainly as good a movie as Selma, and I think it's a better movie than Beasts of No Nation. In fact, if I had to say that Suffragette had any flaws, it would actually be similar to Beasts of No Nation, where your lead character has so much happen to them that's horrible that it starts to, you know, make, I think, some viewers question the credibility of what, the, what they're being told. And while, again, this stuff happened to women back then, just as they happened to child soldiers in Africa, as depicted in Beasts of No Nation, you're really just giving ammo to those people who want to tear down the story that's being told because they're like, oh, well, it's too horrible, it's too ridiculous, it shouldn't be included. And just like with Beasts of No Nation, there is... Um, uh, child uh, molest molestation depicted here as well. Uh, to Beasts of No Nation's credit, not as powerfully, but to Suffragette's credit, it's more ingrained in the, into the importance of the story and you can see why it's included. Uh, so, but I think in both cases, it potentially pushes them a little bit too far. But speaking of, uh, but it, well, I think that where Suffragette succeeds where Beasts of No Nation doesn't is that besides that uh, problem of potential overkill, it's just a much better crafted story. It's a very well-made movie. It's really right up there with the period pieces that we've so come to love out of the UK. Uh, and I think that one of the one of the strengths of a Suffragette is the framing device that it uses and that Carrie Mulligan's character, Maud, it does not start the movie as a suffragette, right? I think that's really important because just like there's some of the things are like there's too much and it's too horrible, uh, I think would, you know, allow some people who are against uh, women's rights to uh, have some ammo. I think this makes it a little bit more willing to maybe persuade them or open their eyes uh, inversely because Maud also has to be convinced it's the importance of women's rights. And so I think that makes it her, her a better person to follow along this journey. And Carrie Mulligan is so good in this movie. Her ability to depict someone who is content being a shadow in society to someone who then becomes a rebel, uh, a rebellious suffragette is, is not only really well done, but it's done in a way that's sympathetic and accessible, I think, to anyone. And that really falls not only on the writing by Abby Morgan, but, but with Carrie Mulligan's performance. And Meryl Streep has done a lot of publicity for this movie. And I think it's really impressive that she's done that considering that she really just has a cameo. I mean, really, like less, like just one scene and really just one little monologue. She just, she's not a big part of this movie whatsoever. So kudos to her for taking so much time to promote it. But Carrie Mulligan is in almost every scene of the movie. And she, her, her work here is the best I've seen Carrie Mulligan ever do. Uh, and she has a very uh, impressive resume and she's definitely someone I think should be nominated come award season and is a strong contender for a win. Now, the other thing that I really like about this movie, uh, and it's right up there with Selma, 
is that it doesn't scream made by women, right? Uh, there isn't like some learning curve you have to, you know, uh, you know, give a pass for or anything like that. It's just an expertly well-crafted piece of filmmaking that anyone could have made. Uh, you know, again, they don't hammer too hard. There isn't like an anger behind the storytelling where you're like, oh, a bunch of angry women made this movie. No, not the case at all. And I think that's really, really impressive. And I think that just like with Ava DuVernay, once again, you have a, 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 an example of filmmaking where women were able to make a movie that is right there on the same level as the movies made by men uh, and, you know, and does not like call attention to, the, to who made, the gender of who made it. And so this is an excellent argument, not just for women's rights, but also for women being able to be a bigger part of filmmaking today. Because both Ava DuVernay and now uh, Sarah uh, Gavron, or Gavron, have proven that they're totally 100%, 110% capable. So I really think you should see Suffragette. I think it's a really important movie, and not just if you're a woman, because if you obviously know women, it's impossible not to know any women. We're 50% of the population, and I think it's a real eye-opener, and it's also just a good story with good performances that's well-made. Uh, sadly, Selma also did not do particularly well at the box office, uh, but at least it got a lot of respect, and I'm hoping that Suffragette does as well, because it deserves it. It's a really, really good movie. I was very, very impressed with it. All right, so that's my review of Suffragette. I'm very curious to continue the conversation with you down below, uh, not just about the movie itself, but also the reception it's getting, and also um, the current status of women's rights. It's uh, really shocking and appalling, and I think definitely something that warrants discussion. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some other episodes right now.